You have found the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi and Small Town Music. I'm Chris Davis, your host. Hey, Mr. Jones, turn up all them lights. My baby's in this house with another man, and I swear we gonna fight. And somebody's got the guy. You're hearing Gatemouth Moore from Yazoo City. He's got a Blues Trail marker right there on Jerry Clower Boulevard. The inaugural tune to this week's episode, The Best of the Blues. Woman, you done made me love you. You done got me for your slave. If you don't treat me better, I'll be forced to put you in your grave. And you'll show no happiness. Now, in this week's show, you're going to hear not only about some of Mississippi's best artists, but also hear from some of them. Your state is known as the birthplace of America's music, and today you're going to hear some about why. On a winding back road in Carroll County is the town of Avalon. And before February of this year, there was the Mississippi John Hurt Museum. But in February, that museum was destroyed by fire. Just a few days before that happened, Professor Don Allen Chip Mitchell from Delta State University and I sat down on the Blues and Arts Hour and talked about the life, music, and legacy of Mississippi John Hurt, one of the progenitors of what's called Hill Country Blues. And so there were these albums floating around and uh, became the provenance of collectors, record collectors. And so in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, these these young folks, beatniks or uh, sort of alternative music fans, rediscovered all these old shellac discs. The problem was is they couldn't figure out what happened to the musicians. And so there was this whole movement of trying to figure out what, where these guys were, if they were still alive, were they still performing? Uh, and that's how we uh, sort of rediscover people like Mississippi John Hurt. Um, so it's just a great story. You had all these sort of, uh, you know, people from the north, people from England, fascinated by the, the sound of this music, but then they wanted to go to the roots of the music. And so they would come to Mississippi and just scour the back roads to find people. The way they found John Hurt is a great story. He recorded one side that was called Avalon Blues, and they couldn't figure out what Avalon Blues, what, what he meant by that. And somebody just was looking at a map of Mississippi, and they saw the Delta community of Avalon, and they said, well, why don't we go there and just you know ask around? And sure enough, they, they went to Avalon and said, do you know John Hurt? And somebody said, yeah, he's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> and so John Hurt had a new career. He had quit really playing uh, you know, on the club circuit. He was an older man by that point. But they put him on the folk circuit. So he's playing like you know, these folk festivals up and down the Northeast uh, Corridor, uh, playing overseas. And he became uh, kind of a rock star, if you will, as much as you're going to be for playing country blues. Um, and so that's that's just a great story of American music is this rediscovery of these guys like Skip James, like John Hurt, like Sunhouse. Uh, so, yes, Robert Johnson died, but these guys continued to live on for many, many years. And near the end of the life, they had this moment where they could be stars. And that's you know a terrific story. They could make a living as musicians. In New York this morning, just about half past nine. Out in New York this morning, just about hey past nine. Thought of my mother and album, couldn't hardly keep from crying. 
have none, my hometown always on my mind. Have none, my hometown always on my mind. Put in mamas in Avalon, want me there all the time. Kisses and waving at me. When the train left Allen, throwing kisses and waving at me. Let's come back, Daddy, and stay right here with me. Have long the small town, have no great big rain. Avalon, the small town, had no great big rain. But in Mars and Avalon, you sure will spin your chain. Good town, but it's not for mine. New York's a good town, but it's not for mine. Went back down, yeah, where I put him on all the time. What's great about John Hurt is he doesn't sound like sort of the traditional Delta Blues. When I say that, I mean that the Delta Blues style is sort of a shouting blues style. It's using a lot of, uh, you know, not only picking the strings of a guitar, but thumping the guitar as a percussion instrument. Very rhythmic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, basically because it was a dance music, right? So, you know, juke joints, clubs. So basically, you're a one-man band, and you're trying to get people to dance, so you're going to figure out ways to do it. Plus, you have to shout over the crowd, right? And you can't turn the bass up. Yeah. yeah. So you got to find a way to do it. Right. And there's no there's no amplification, right? There's no electricity in these clubs. You know, they have oil lamps lighting the, the these sort of informal clubs that were in existence in the 20s and 30s. Um, so that, that became associated with Mississippi and the Delta. And then you've got the Piedmont Blues so- style, which is in uh, the Upper South, and it's much more influenced by... Appalachian music, white country music, old time music, uh, a lot of those country music styles, you know, banjo, obviously banjo has its roots in African musical cultures, but it's Mm -hmm. definitely associated now more so with country music. And so it tends to be, you know, a lot more string sound music, a lot kind of, you know, I hate to use the word, but sweeter blues, easier on the ears, acoustic based. Uh, And so the fact that John Hurt sounds more like Piedmont blues than he does Delta blues is just one of those great musical mysteries. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was one reason why John Hurt was so amazing on the folk circuit and influenced so many musicians in the late 60s, early 70s. His age, agent at the time, uh, one of the guys who sort of reintroduced him to the world of performance and the folk festival in the late 60s was Dick Waterman, who just passed away. Uh, Dick really helped to rediscover John Hurt, put him out on the folk circuit. John Hurt made a living because of him, introduced him to a new generation of musicians that were fascinated by uh, that style, including Bonnie Raitt. And Dick Waterman was Bonnie Raitt's first agent. So there's these great, again, crossroads, if you will, of musical styles and influences that go back decades. So, uh, But yeah, John Hurt just... Uh, just a beautiful sound. Um, just love his albums. Coming up, the journey from Indianola to Beale Street, then back to Indianola for good. You're listening to the Blues and Arts Hour on 1039 WYAB. 
You're listening to the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB, brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi and Small Town Music. And today's show is called The Best of the Blues. And here's a brand new one from Will Coppage. There's another mighty man dead and gone Tired of breaking his body down to the bone Did I say goodbye? Yes, did I say so long As I've been in the Delta too long As I've been in the Delta too long Paying for my sin with a song If you play the devil's game You're gonna pay him hell for day Cause I've been in the Delta so long well, Can you spare me a few dollars? For some wine. This Friday night, I need me a sign. Call my ramble friend who beat me to heaven. Cause I've been in the Delta so long. Tell my wife and dog that I love them. Tell my father here at the house, always win. Well, sister and mother, yeah, please don't suffer. Cause I've been in the Delta too long. Cause I've been in that Delta too long. Paying for my sin with a song You play the devil's game You're gonna pay him every day I've been in the Delta too long Well, the Tobo blows his horn sad and low my body shakes and I got no place to go Throw that log on the fire Little gas to make it high I've been in the Delta so long Cause I've been in the Delta too long Paying for my sin with a song You play the devil's game It's gonna pay you every day Cause I've been in the Delta too long Cause I've been in the Delta too long Will Coppage, been in the Delta too long. Will Coppage is still in the Delta, by the way. He describes his former work with the Washington County Economic Alliance, helping introduce people on river cruises to a sample of Delta life. You know, the Mississippi Queen and the American Queen and then Viking. So we have three cruise lines that come through. But Viking is like um, very, very modern looking ships where the other ones are like uh, Like old riverboat looking ships. Yeah, and um, I mean, so now that it's back in season, uh, up to two times a week they come, and it's 300 guests, and um, they uh, get bus over to E Bass, which is an old high school, but it's where our council is downtown. Yes, and uh, you know we meet them when they get off the bus with Bloody Marys and iced tea or sweet tea. You know, of course they're always asking, "Do you have unsweet?" We're like, no, no unsweet tea. And um, <laughs> and then like Terry Bean Harmonica is playing when they walk in, and then uh, uh, David Cruz uh, 
does all the food. So it's like we, we bring out a hot tamale course and Ann Martin, who's one of the hot tamamas, kind of talks about hot tamales and why they're prevalent in the Delta and why Greenville's the hot tamale capital of the world. And, and then um, it used to be Hank Burdine. Now it's his son, uh, Matthew Burdine, when he can, just kind of a storyteller of the area. And uh, kind of he, he'll do like the Hulk Collier story. And then Steve Azar and his band plays about an hour set. And I mean, it's like, you know, smoke machines, light show. I mean, it's huge. And then like fried catfish and all this other food. And then they can go and tour the, the galleries and hopefully spend a little money. Going to take you back now to 2015 and Beale Street in Memphis. What you're hearing is the processional for B.B. King, who had died a couple of days earlier. And it was packed. <laughs> That went from Beale Street all the way to Indianola, which was considered his hometown, even though he was born closer to Itabina. And that's where Riley King, better known as the Beale Street Blues Boy, or BB, learned to play the blues on a diddly bow, which was essentially a piece of piano wire strung between two nails on a board. In this rare clip from 1975, B.B. King actually plays an acoustic guitar. That was not his bag. You know him for playing that black Gibson electric hollow body known as Lucille. Everything leads me back to the feeling of the blues or the feeling that I get from playing or singing the blues or hearing others singing play. In fact, I think life itself is blues. The earliest sounds of blues that I can remember was while in the fields, while people would be picking cotton or chopping cotton or something, usually one guy would be plowing by himself or maybe one guy would... Uh, take his hole and chop way out in front of everybody else. And usually you would hear this guy sing. Oh, I wake up in the morning About the break of day This one's from a little later in his career, and this is Better Not Look Down from 1979 on the Best of the Blues on the Blues and Arts Hour. I've been around, and I've seen some things. People moving faster than the speed of sound, faster than the speed and bullet. People living like Superman all day and all night. And I won't say if it's wrong, or I won't say if it's right. I'm pretty fast myself. But I do have some advice to pass along right here in the words of this song. You better not look down if you want to keep on flying. Put the hammer down, keep the full speed ahead. You better not look back, or you might just wind up dying. mine showed up the other day that girl had lived in love and for love and over love and under love all her life if the arrows from cupid's bow that had passed through her heart had been sticking out of her body she would look like a porcupine and she asked me bb do you think i've lived my life all wrong and i said the only advice i have to pass along is concealed in the course of this song girl, girl, I'm not if you wanna keep on flying, put the hammer down, keep it full speed ahead. Better not look back, or you might just wind up crying. You can keep it moving, you don't look down. I was walking down the street at sunrise one morning in London, England. And there was a very large Rolls Royce limousine pulling slowly along the street. And in that Rolls Royce, 
house was the Queen of England, Luck and Ty, just got back from a party. And the Queen leaned out and she said, aren't you B.B. King? She said, oh, B.B., sometimes it's so hard to pull things together. Could you tell me what you think I ought to do? And I said, you better not go down if you want to keep on flying. Put the hammer down. You're hearing the best of the blues on the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB. You're listening to the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB, coming to you courtesy of Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Mississippi, and Small Town Music. Charlie Musselwhite is an understated Mississippi treasure. Born in Kosciuszko, he grew up in Memphis. You're going to hear a song about how he came to quit drinking. It's his own autobiographical story called The Well, and it has something to do with a little girl, a real-life story about a little girl who fell into a well. You might remember that. Her name was Jessica McClure. And after that, you'll hear how Charlie Musselwhite came to understand and appreciate the blues and started playing harmonica, the instrument for which he is most well-known. I don't know if I told you the story about a little girl. She fell way, way down in a deep old Texas well. I was on my way to work when I heard it on the news. She took my attention from a night of getting real loose. I'd been drinking really heavy for many long years. I was trapped in my well of trouble, worry, and fear. Now, this little girl, she was being, she was being so very brave, and I was drinking my way to my early grave. Memphis uh, was a little part of town where it was some woods and a creek and and as a little kid I'd go down to the creek because it was the coolest place to go in the summer and we didn't have air conditioning and I could still remember laying on the shady side of the creek and I could hear 
there were some fields where they worked in the fields along the creek, and I could hear singing in the fields, and it was blues. And I don't even know if I knew it was called blues at the time, but I just remember that the feeling in that music sounded like how I felt. And I was kind of a lonely kid. You know, I was an only child or a single mom, and she worked all the time, and I was alone a lot. So that music was my comforter. And as I got a little older, I discovered the, the downtown Memphis, there was the street singers playing on the corner for tips, and they were playing blues. And I, it wasn't stuff I heard on the radio, but man, it sure sounded good. <laughs> and it just it had that feeling that I, just resonated with me. And I liked all kinds of music. I liked old hillbilly music and gospel music and you know, I listened to the gospel on the radio, and um, I liked old Hank Williams and Lefty Frizzell, all that. I liked it all, but blues just had a special little thing to it that really resonated with me. Like I said before, it, it just felt like my comforter. So I was really drawn to it. And then I started going around looking for old blues 78s, and I could find them in junk stores and old uh, used furniture stores. And a lot of a lot of them had harmonica on them, like the first Sonny Boy Williamson. I I just heard that harmonica and I thought, man, that just sounds so good. And I seemed like every kid about my age, they all had everybody had a harmonica. And I remember thinking one day, listening to Sonny Boy, man, you got a harmonica. It sounds so good to listen to that. I bet it feels even better to play it. So I'd take my harmonica out in the woods and just fool around with it and just started teaching myself. You know, the harmonica is the only instrument you can't see how it's played. You can't watch somebody and see what they're doing. Most every instrument, maybe every instrument besides the harmonica, you have to use your hands somehow. So uh, I didn't learn from anybody because I, I couldn't. I just taught myself, just found my way around on it. And I didn't know I was preparing myself for a career. I was, I was working at it even harder. Go ahead.
Coming up, the man who put the funk in the blues and his chosen hometown of Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB. You've got the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB. Brought to you each week by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi and Small Town Music. I'm Chris Davis, your host. Today's show is called The Best of the Blues. And now, our conversation with Bobby Rush, who won a Grammy this year for Best Traditional Folk Album. His career in music has spanned more than 70 years. He started out on what was known as the Chitlin Circuit, as he explains. Now, if you think about it, 90 years is a long time to be alive. And when Bobby Rush started on his musical journey, it was not a time of opportunity for African Americans in Mississippi or Chicago, as he explains. And he talks right now about opportunity and how it grew for him. That's what, this is what about it. It's just not having been this opportunity all the time, all of my life. It's, and the opportunity hasn't been here. So now the opportunity here, you know, you think about I was 83 years old before I won a Grammy. And I'm not sad about that. I'm just, I'm blessed about it because it's better late than never. Not because I didn't have good records. It's just the opportunity to win that, man. Well, it's now people are recognizing what what you do and the quality of the music. And uh, that's right. right. You know, Mississippi's doing that nowadays. They they put up this blues trail and uh, these blues that's trail right. markers. Uh, do you find that this uh, kind of redeems Mississippi a little bit for the way that it that it used to treat black people and and black music? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's it's came up politically it was a conscious thing with people who wants to do right about all people, regardless of the color of their skin. And it's good. It's good. You know, I'm not bitter about what they did as uh, much as a, I'm so happy about what they're doing, you know. And Mississippi had this the name of being, being the Jim Crow thing, but not just Mississippi. Mississippi I take the blame for a lot of things, but it's all over the world. It's all over the world. Well, you were talking about you know? being in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chicago. Come on. You know, I thought when I got Chicago, that, that would never happen for that. What happened to me, the baddest thing that ever happened to me, to my soul there, was being a play behind a curtain for $7 a night, me and the band, for $7 a night. I was paying muddy waters, $5.50 as a guest, $5.50 a night. Was that having to come out of that $7? Yeah, well, I had to, I just spent three guys with $7, you know? So we make close to $2 a piece and, and, and tips. See, the chilling circuit, that with the chitlin, we would, we would, that's why our food, chitlin with the hog intestines. That's what we had for food. We get seven dollars a night and we get two plates. I got so good one time, the man would give me four plates. I would sell three of them for 25 cents a piece. That's 75 cents a night. And I would eat the other one. And God, man, come on. That was my money. You know, some days, some days I would walk out of there with two dollars and fifty cents tip. And then over that in nineteen fifty one, we get two dollars percent of tip. You're making seven dollars. Come on. Well, it certainly is a different yeah. world now. You're playing all oh, over so the world. I'm playing all over the world and enjoying it. And you know, I'm still learning, and I'm still enthused about it because a man can live a long time without water, food, but you can't live long without hope. I still have hope. Louisiana, I don't do no more. I used to carry water 15 miles for 50 cents a day. It's a shame a boy, nine years old, had to work so hard every day. I used to pick cotton in the cotton field where I used to live. Don't mind picking cotton, y'all, if I own the cotton fields. Take a look in the mirror, uh, tell me what do you see? What you see in the mirror, Lord, Lord, uh, could see me. I'm free, I'm free, uh, I'm free, look at me. I got the shackles off my feet, chains off my mind. I tell y'all, I'm free, I'm free, I say I'm, I'm free, look at me. Got the shackles on my feet, chains off my mind. <laughs> hey. 
ain't got no boss man always hounding me Out here on the road, I'm fast and free I don't need no politician telling me what to do I'm free to vote and I can vote where I want to Someday we all gonna find Get the shackles off the feet, chains off your mind Look in my eyes, tell me what do you see Can't you see the freedom in me Tell y'all, I'm free, look at me huh. I'm free, can't you see Got the shackle on my feet, chains off my mind I'm free, I'm free, huh. I'm free, look at me, shackles off my feet, chains off my mind, I tell y'all. You're listening to the Blues and Arts Hour on 103.9 WYAB. You just heard Bobby Rush and I'm Free. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Blues and Arts Hour and the best of the blues. Tune in next week right here on 103.9 WYAB.